Well, good morning everyone. Welcome to another uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church time of devotion. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this time of year when we can start uh, to concentrate our minds upon the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the best gift that God could give us. And we pray, Lord, that we will see more than just the trimmings and the lights and the cards and the gifts, uh, but that we will see the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Saviour. Thank you that you loved us so much that you allowed him to come into this world to die for sinners such as us. We thank you that he conquered death. He rose from the grave. He was seen by many before ascending into heaven. And we believe that he is interceding for each and every one of us now at your right hand in heaven. Lord, we pray that you will help us this morning as we study your word. Speak to us through it, we pray, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm reading the first 10 verses of Isaiah chapter 41. Be silent before me, you irons. Let the nations renew their strength. Let them come forward and speak. Let us meet together at the place of judgment. Who has stirred up one from the east, calling him in righteousness to his service? He, he hands nations over to him and subdues kings before him. He turns them to dust with his sword, to wind-blown chaff with his bow. He pursues them and moves on unsaved by a path his feet have not travelled before. Who has done this and carried it through, calling forth the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, with the first of them and with the last, I am he. The irons have seen it and fear. The ends of the earth tremble. They approach and come forward. They help each other and say to their companions, Be strong. The metal workers encourage the goldsmith, and the one who smooths with the hammer spurs on the one who strikes the anvil. One says of the welding, It is good. The other nails down the idol so it will not topple. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And may God add his blessing to that reading of his word this morning. And uh, it's verse 10 that I would like us to just think about this morning. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear is universal. All of us deal with things that sometimes scare us. So how should we respond to God's word, Fear not, for I am with you. Can we honestly take to heart Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 today and experience freedom because of God's presence. What does this Bible verse really mean? First of all, we can't deal with anything we don't acknowledge. We need to be honest with ourselves and face those fears. You may be worrying about your children, young or grown, grown up, or worrying about a loved one who is sick. Maybe you're wondering how you're going to live after a family member has died. All of us can be fearful about our health, 
or our finances. We can worry about all sorts of things, big and small. And yet our God knew we would struggle with fear. And so he says, do not fear, for I am with you. God is aware of our tendency uh, to fear. And he cares about every fear we face. In the Bible, we find commands and encouragements to not feel fear. Take courage, fear not, and more. In fact, uh, this command of not fearing appears some 300 times. God doesn't want us to be consumed by fear. And yet, our fears do not surprise him in the least. We need to realize God is not disappointed in us when we have fears. No more than you are disappointed when one of your children is afraid. God, of course, encourages us not to fear so that we will trust in his presence and know he is listening and working on our behalf. So what does it mean, fear not? God, we've already seen, knows us thoroughly. He knows when we get worried or become anxious. He knows when th that we are human. And yet God gives us many reminders, doesn't he, to fear not. To fear not means to trust God instead of believing our present situation is bigger than God is. God wants us to trust him, to trust that he will be enough no matter what. Peter believed he would never let Jesus down. He saw himself as brave and totally sold out for the Lord. When Jesus told Peter in Matthew 26 verse 34 that Peter would deny him, Peter did not believe Jesus. Maybe someone else would fall and fail, but surely not Peter. Sadly, Peter found out that Jesus was right. And when Peter heard the rooster crow, he wept bitterly. But God uh, leaves Peter, uh, sorry, but did God leave Peter in his fear? No, he was ever present. While Peter faced his fears and frailties, God ultimately equipped Peter to become a mighty witness. The Bible tells us God is not the originator of fear. You can read that in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7. The enemy of our souls loves it when we are afraid. Satan will do anything to get our eyes off the Savior. Remember when Peter saw Jesus on the water and wanted to get out of the boat and join him. The weather was not good when Peter made his decision, but looking at Jesus, he decided to do it. Peter felt the water beneath his feet. One step, two steps. And then what happened? He took his eyes off Jesus and immediately began to sink. Just like we do when we start letting the wind and waves that scare us, eclipse our faith. You can read that account, of course, in Matthew chapter 14. It is important to note when Peter called out to the Lord, Jesus did not reprimand him, nor did he put him to shame. Instead, Jesus immediately reached down, lifting him out of his predicament, just like God, God does for us. God's promise in Isaiah 41 verse 10 tells us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hands.
How to fear not. I was thinking of uh, seven ways, or I read about seven ways to defeat fear with daily faith. I'll just go through them very quickly. Number one, remember God has promised he will never leave you. Satan wants us to fear as if God has left us all alone. But that's not true. No matter what you will face, God is right there. Two, remember God is never surprised by our circumstances. He is sovereign and knows everything. He even knows our future. Three, remember God can work your circumstances out for good, no matter how bleak they appear. Satan will try to convince you that your situation is the exception, but Satan is a liar. Number four, stop asking why did this happen. When you're afraid, facing something, fa facing something that frightens is difficult. Instead, in, instead of that question, why did this happen, ask God, what can I learn from this? Number five, remind yourself of all God has done for you. Be like David who reminded himself of all God had done for him. Remember all the times God has been with you as you faced your giants. Number six, remind yourself God is bigger than whatever you fear. We are talking about Almighty God, the creator of all things, seen and unseen. And finally, number seven, Visualize yourself placing whatever scares you into God's hands, his large, capable hands. Then take a deep breath and picture yourself walking away because God has it. God loves us. He's always looking out for our good. Our Father wants what's best for his children. He tells us to fear not, because no matter how hard things get, they are not too difficult for him. Impossible situation of God's speciality. Accept the fact that we will go through difficult times. And it will take courage, but we can also take courage that we will walk through waters as we uh, uh, that we walk through waters when we will be with God. He will be with us in times of loneliness or when we suffer physically. God will always be with us. And so the message for each and every one of us as we begin a new day, fear not, God is with us, God loves us, and God wants us to put our trust in him. Have you felt the Lord speaking to you this morning? If you have, perhaps he's asking you uh, to restore your belief in him. Or maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior before. And now he's knocking at the door asking to come in, to come into your heart and to come into your life. Why don't you accept Jesus today? Why don't you ask for a new restored relationship with Jesus? If you want to do that, just pray this simple prayer with me now. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. In your name I ask these things. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer this morning, we would strongly recommend that you get in touch 
with the leader or the pastor of your local gospel preaching church and tell him that you've made a decision for Christ or you want to be restored into a good, sound and loving relationship with him. And, you know, they're going to be so pleased and they will be delighted to help you and to nurture you and to encourage you. And if you live in the Newbridge area, please, I urge you, get in touch with us at Tabernacle Baptist Church, right in the high street in Newbridge, opposite Greg's, we say. And our pastor, the Reverend Peter Cho, or any of the leaders will be happy to help you, to encourage you, to nurture you, to love you, and to welcome you into the fellowship. God bless you. What a wonderful gift that of Christmas you have been given by accepting the gift of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, this morning I bring my fears before you. I know you are almighty. I know you are sovereign. But sometimes I'm still afraid. Father, please keep reminding me of all the wonderful things you have done for me. Remind me of all the times you were with me when life became very hard. Thank you, God, for your constant love, even when I have doubts and fears. Thank you for your patience and your tender mercies that are new every morning. And Lord, thank you for your promise to be with me always. I love you, Lord, and I pray this in your Son's most holy and precious name. In Jesus' name. Amen.